بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله العليم الخبير المتقن نظام العالم بلا معين ونصير فسبحان الله الذي حكمته بالغة وعلمه غزير ونعمه واصلة إلى كل صغير وكبير ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له في نقير ولا قطمير ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله الذي هدانا بكتاب منير ودعانا إلى الله بالإنذار والتبشير صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ما دامت الكواكب تسير أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فهل عسيتم إن توليتم أن تفسدوا في الأرض وتقطعوا أرحامكم أولئك الذين لعنهم الله فأصمهم وأعمى أبصارهم وعن كعب بن عجرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خرج يوما إلى المنبر فقال حين ارتقى درجة آمين ثم رقي أخرى فقال آمين ثم رقي الثالثة فقال آمين فلما نزل عن المنبر وفرغ قلنا يا رسول الله لقد سمعنا منك كلاما قال وسمعتموه قالوا نعم قال إن جبريل عرض بي حين ارتقيت درجة فقال بعد من أدرك أبويه عند الكبر أو أحدهما فلم يدخل الجنة قال قلت آمين وقال بعد من ذكرت عنده فلم يصل عليك قلت آمين ثم قال بعد من أدرك رمضان فلم يغفر له قلت آمين أو كما قال Honorable scholars, respected brothers, friends and elders, it is basic medical knowledge that if a person wants to improve his health, boost his immune system, reduce the risk of becoming sick and unwell, then basically he has to do two things amongst others. A, he needs to rid his system of bad eating habits be it processed food, fizzy drinks, chocolates, candy, smoking, drinking, and as they would say today, the number one killer is sugar, either eliminated from the system or they talk of healthy alternatives, xylitol and stevia, and you get the debutted one as well. I'm not marketing, but they say so. So that's the first thing he needs to do. And coupled with that, he needs to introduce a balanced diet, eat in moderation, exercise. There needs to be fiber. There needs to be roughage. Uh, there needs to be some good fruit, some greens, etc. If he can do these two things, then he will strengthen his immune system. He will reduce the risk of becoming sick and unwell. In a like manner, in a like manner, if a person wants to align his spiritual self, he wants to get his, uh, his uh, alignment correct for his spirituality. He has to equally rid himself of those evil actions as a result of which he has become the victim of the wrath of Allah and the curse of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And coupled with that, he has to introduce those virtuous actions in his life through which he will become deserving of the du'as of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the blessings of Allah. Muhammad ibn Wasi' rahimahullah was a great tabi'i. He went to visit Bilal ibn Abi Burayda wa Bilalun fi hashamihi wa khadamihi and Bilal was in his pomp and glory, flamboyance, wealth, affluence. So Bilal, you know, trumpeting himself and throwing out his arrogance because of the wealth that he had. Allah speaks about the two brothers in Surah Kahf, that when the one brother entered his orchard, then because of his arrogance, he said, Ma an abada. I don't think my empire will ever perish. Some people verbalize it. Other people's body language give off that same arrogance. 
Hazrat Qari Sahib recited so beautifully Surah Alaq in that Allah says kalla innal insana layatgha arra'ahu istaghna verily man tends to rebel when he perceives himself self sufficient when he thinks i'm independent i'm done now i'm not indebted to you i'm not obligated to you i can fly by myself that's the time he becomes arrogant he becomes obstinate so bilal ibn abi buraida said to muhammad ibn wasi rahimahullah kayfa tara baytana what's your opinion on my house and my empire so these were great he was a sage of the age these were not people who had the transitory eye they had the deeper eye he said in baytaka la tayyib wal jannatu atyab minhu your house is beautiful but nothing to rave about jannah is way more awesome than your house wa dhikrun nari yulhi anhu and if you think of hell and the punishment of akhira you'll find less time to boast and brag about your material possession so he changed strides for a moment and he says okay ma taqulu fil qadr what's your take on destiny the article of fate predestiny taqdeer allah speaks about it faqadarna fa ni'mal qadirun that we calculate we proportion we estimate inna kulli shay'in khalaqnahu biqadar we've created everything with a measure ma taqulu fil qadr so look at the amazing response of this great sage of the age he said jiranuka min ahli alqubur fakkir fihim fa inna fihim la shughla listen brother people in your neighborhood are dying daily maybe you want to focus about the transitory nature of life how short life is and that ultimately we making our way to akhira and if you preoccupy yourself with that then you won't have time to try and unpack the intricacies of taqdeer and fate insaan ki zindagi is qadar mukhtasar hai ke wo mohabbat ka haq bhi ada nahi kar sakta na jaane nafrat karne ke liye log kahan se waqt nikalte hain insaan ki zindagi is qadar mukhtasar hai ke wo mohabbat ka haq bhi ada nahi kar sakta na jaane nafrat karne ke liye log itna waqt kahan se nikalte hain life is so short that we cannot express our love adequately i don't know where people find time to hate despise and dislike so he said okay okay leave the topic of qadar leave the topic of death make a dua for me you know the typical way out so he said ma yanfa'uka du'a'i wa 'ala babika kadha wa kadha kullun yaqul innaka zalamtahum yartafi'u du'a'uhum qabla du'a'i i can make a dua for you now my brother but there are 10 people standing at the door each one of them claims that they are victims of your exploitation and your abuse sometimes we don't realize you know i like to be comfortable okay uh, no 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 are yaar no no take it inshallah i'll i'll settle there are 10 people at your door each one of them are claiming that they victims of your exploitation their curse will be heard before my prayer is answered in your favor i know of a woman who lived with her mother in law and subsequently she passed on the mother in law and this is a relatively pious noble home and this sister cried with a crack in her voice and said 15 years has lapsed since my mother in law has passed away i still can't find it within myself to read one surah ikhlas and make dua for her i don't condone that attitude but surely that is a reflection of the extent of the infliction upon that woman i'm not talking of an irreligious family i'm talking of a very allah conscious family 15 years has lapsed since my mom in law has passed on i cannot bring myself to a point 
and vice versa. I don't want to speak on one side from both sides. I'm just saying, sometimes we think the connotations of exploitation and abuse are only associated to those in power. In uh, the 12th juz in Surah Hud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا فَتَمَسَّكُمُ النَّارُ and do not incline towards those who oppress, least you are also seized and gripped by the punishment. So in Madarik al-Tanzil, it's mentioned, Qal al-Muwaffaq, Tilmidhu al-Zamakhshari, who was the student of Zamakhshari, who was, uh, you know, an absolute authority in tafsir, and he was an erudite scholar. That Salla Khalfa Man Qara'a Hadhihi Al Aya Fi Salah. He was in prayer, and the Imam recited this in the congregational prayer. Ghushiya Ali. He became unconscious. Falamma Afaq. When he became conscious, people asked him, "Why you passed out?" He said, "Hada Bi Man Rakana Ila Man Zalama. Fakeifa Bi Zalim." هذا بمن ركن إلى من ولا تركن إلى الذين ظلموا فتمسكم النار. Do not incline, do not associate, do not assimilate with the tyrant, with the oppressor, with the dictator, with the one who is, you know, abuses. Least you are also grip. This is the repercussion and the consequences of the one who inclines. What about the tyrant himself? What about the tyrant himself? And Hassan Basri's call is also mentioned there. He says, Inna Allah jama'ad deena fi la ayn. La tatgo wa la tarkanu ila. Allah has gathered or explained or simplified deen between two negations, two no. Wa la tatgo, ay wa la takhruju min hududillah. Do not rebel, do not transgress, do not transcend the boundaries, the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not oppress. In principle, if you do these two things, it's a synopsis, it's a synopsis. And Sufyan Thawri rahimahullah's quotation is also mentioned, I just have a flash of it there. Inna fi jahannam, in jahannam there is a valley, may Allah protect us. La yaskunuhu illa al-qurra. This valley of hell will only be inhabited by scholars who assimilate with tyrant rulers. May Allah protect us. لا يسكنه إلا القراء الزائرون للملوك. Those who associate and assimilate with tyrants. You know, there's a beautiful incident of one person who was a scholar. So the king of the time asked him. لِمَ لَا تَزُورُنَا Why don't you visit us? He said, لِأَنِّي أَرَدْتُ أَن تَكُونَ مِنْ خَيْرِ الْمُلُوكِ حَيْثُ تَزُورُ الْعُلَمَاءِ وَلَا أَكُونُ مِنْ شَرِّ الْعُلَمَاءِ حَيْثُ أَزُورُ الْمُلُوكِ Wow. He said because the king asked him, but everybody comes to visit me, why don't you visit me? He said because I wanted you to be the best of kings who visit the ulama and I didn't want to be the worst of scholars who visit the leaders. Wow. So what did I say, my brother? If you want to improve your health, boost your immune system, we've got to do two things. And of course, the focus here is from the spiritual perspective. We also need to do the same thing. We need to come out and free and rid ourselves of those actions through which we've become victims of the curse of Allah and his Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we need to inculcate and imbibe within us those actions through which we become deserving of the du'as of Nabi alayhi salatu was salam and the blessings of Allah. The hadith I quoted before you is a very famous hadith. Ka'ab ibn Ujra radiyallahu anhu narrates it that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ascended the pulpit and he said, Ameen. And he ascended the second pulpit and he said, Ameen. And he ascended the third step and he said, Ameen. And when he descended, Ka'ab ibn Ujra radiallahu anhu said, we observe something strange, unusual and peculiar. And he said, awa sami'atumuhu, and really did you take note of it? And they said, absolutely. He said, we observed on each step, there was a pause, there was an amin, 
there was a reflection and nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said correctly when i got on the first step jibril came to me and he said woe be to the one who was blessed with both of his parents in old age or one at least and he was unable to enter jannah through serving them so jibril cursed them and i said yeah this warrants a curse i endorse the curse of jibril i agree with jibril in this curse and i got on to the next step and jibril said ba'uda man dhukirta indahu falam yusalli alayk woe be to the one in whose presence your blessed name is mentioned sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he does not send salutations upon you jibril cursed and i endorsed his curse and i said amen and then jibril got when i got on to the third step jibril said woe be to the one who finds the blessed sacred momentous month of ramadan and does not capitalize and exploit on the sacred month and earn pardon and forgiveness for himself and i said amen to such a curse he deserves the wrath of allah because of this crime of his hakim al ummah in one of his writings and i read this in his mawa'id then i was blown away and the more i read about him the more i realize what knowledge allah had endowed him with and the more you realize how shallow our knowledge is he raises the question and he says that in islam there are many crimes that are more heinous more severe more intense person perpetrates the crime of zina theft etc outwardly apparently these crimes do not appear to be so heinous and intense why did jibril curse such three individuals and why did the nabi of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam endorse this curse whereas we know that whenever he was asked curse a nation inni lam ubath la'ana wa inna ma bu'ithtu rahma i don't know how to curse my allah has not sent me to curse my allah has sent me to teach as a mercy as as a source of kindness but your jibril curses categoric categorically emphatically the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam endorses the curse and he writes so amazingly he says it's human nature when people cannot deliver on a simple task it angers you more if you give a person a complex task and then he doesn't deliver then you say well again i know it was quite challenging probably i should have rethinked it myself i shouldn't have told him given his age he's new i think my mistake no worries but if you give someone a simple task and again i marvel at the expression of the quran you tell a child take this key and just go next door and give it to the uncle that's it and then an hour later you meet him oh i thought i had to give it to the fourth neighbor and i left it with the domestic helper and then what's the father like you good for nothing man you know the, the quran speaks in a different context about some people aina ma yuwajjihu la ya'ti bi khair there are some people wherever you direct them they just cannot deliver so human nature when people cannot accomplish a basic task it will provoke you anger you and rage you much more like i didn't ask you for anything complex it was simple it was abc it was basic hence the prophet of allah curses that such a simple thing to serve your parents to send salutations on the nabi of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to exploit ramadan and have your sins forgiven you cannot do this you deserve jibril's curse and my amen then he expounds and elucidates and it gets more intriguing and riveting we can agree in principle that to send salutations on nabi alayhi salam is easy it's simple there's nothing to it serving your parents is intrinsic it's part of your nature wa dainu an-nas yawman sayqda wa dainu abika lan taqwa alayhi you can discharge the obligations of others sooner or later but you can never offset the favor of your father wadainu nasi yawman it only takes you to become a father to realize 
how the mind of that man is running relentlessly for the growth the development and the protection of his children it just takes you to become a father and realize this but some might counter argue and say the observing of fast is a tall order and especially those that are in summer countries in the western world and it can run up to 18 19 hours and each year we encounter it etc but subhanallah he gives such a beautiful answer to explain that the fasting of ramadan is also easy to further reiterate and impress the fact that the nabi of allah is cursing or jibril is cursing and the nabi of allah is endorsing because something simple was asked of you can we as an ummah not tap and acknowledge and exploit it he gives two explanations the first is that when the nabi of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam went for miraj then musa alaihi salam told him that 50 prayer is fairly daunting it's challenging it's a tall order your ummah is weak and feeble so musa alaihi salatu wassalam implores him to go back to allah and request concession and nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam went back and back and forth until 50 was reduced to 5 and nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam acknowledged the intercession of musa and equally accepted the feebleness of his ummah but we don't find that the nabi of allah requested allah to reduce the 30 fast of ramadan to 3 knowing very well that his ummah was weak why because he was aware that this is something my ummah can bear but then he gives a very academic reply and this is in the context of this and it has broader implications as well and that's the beauty of the quran so he says the answer to making your fast easy is not to remind yourself how difficult it is no it's a long fast it's a hot day as long as you keep yourself occupied time will pass by and you won't realize it and that is precisely what is expected of us and then he gives the analogy of the quran and he says that this commentary of minds can answer many different aspects of life and it's an answer to many of our challenges we going through difficulties sometimes emotional psychological so when allah told the mother of musa and i beg for your undivided attention When Allah told the mother of Musa put Musa in the basket and put the basket in the river Nile wa awhayna ila ummi Musa an ardi'i fa idha khifti alayhi fa alqihi fil yam wa la takhafi wa la tahzani and we inspired the mum of Musa put the baby that is Moses in the basket and put the basket in the river Nile now this is a mother it's not easy it's challenging In fact Allah says that in kadat la tubdi bihi lawla arbatna ala qalbiha litakuna min almu'minin she was on the verge of divulging to the people that that's my child sailing in the basket but because we strengthened her heart and we gave her comfort she restrained and contained herself and when allah gives peace to someone my brother then he can go through the greatest of tragedies but there will be a smile on his face when allah gives peace to a person then you listen i mean i mean you've heard interviews now of people who lost their families in new zealand and the non live alone the, non, the muslims are grappling to understand like how can a person reconcile and this is the testimony of iman so one thing we need to know Allah has not said in the Quran that because of faith and iman and submission you won't be tested rather Allah said because of iman I will hold you firm through your test so you say but I'm a believer well that's exactly what Allah said Allah said he will test you and because of faith Allah will give you strength you you see it and you are baffled like really this is iman and that's why for a believer now when i was in cape town two days ago i was speaking on this i said for a believer there is only a win win situation qul hal tarabbasuna bina illa ihdal husnayn 
tell them whatever infliction you want to come upon us for us it's only one of two good either it's martyrdom and direct jannah or it's pain and sabr and ultimate jannah so so it's only a win win qul hal i wish you can understand this in arabic qul hal tarabbasuna bina illa ihda al husnayn so one of the one of the things that the kuffar had was you know invoking curses on nabi alayhi salatu wassalam wa min al a'rab man yattakhidhu ma yunfiqu maghrama wa yatarabbasu bikum ad dawair alayhim da'iratu as-saw that they consider zakat to be a burden and they anticipate in tragedies to surround you allah says may tragedies grip them may it seize them then they couldn't do anything there were people amongst them can i relax a little bit there were people amongst them can can somebody just get a regular chair there for me please just just a regular chair may allah bless you no sorry about that jazakallah so there were people amongst the disbelievers that they had an eye and with that eye we talk of hasad we talk of nazar we talk of the evil eye so their gaze was so strong that they could drop a camel and they also tried to use that kind of venom and poison to drop the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa in yakadu alladhina kafaru la yuzliqunaka bi absarihim lamma sami'u adh-dhikra wa yaquluna innahu lamajnun so they came to try and throw out venom but of course allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had protected nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam completely so then when they couldn't do anything they said okay we'll just wait for him to die so allah said will you love forever natarabbasu bihi rayb almanun fa in mitta fahum alkhalidun wah wah man like wow نتربص به ريب المنون نعم جزاك الله خير ام ريلاكس ابدا يو سيت لونجر فور ا بيليفر اتس ا وين وين سيتويشن So Allah said yuthabbitu Allahu alladhina amanu bil qawli thabit fi al hayati ad dunya by virtue of faith he'll keep you firm you look at these interviews a woman lost her husband and a child i mean it's on on, on youtube you've seen it i've seen it you've seen it on social media a woman lost her parents lost her son i miss them i yearn for them i pine for them but i know my lord has a greater plan for them what besides faith can make you articulate this so allah said we gave strength when allah gives strength then a young child can even tell a tyrant ruler on his face what you doing is absurd what you doing is preposterous wa rabatna ala qulubihim idh qamu fa qalu rabbuna rabbus samawati wal ard لن ندعو من دونه الها لقد قلنا اذا شططا and we strengthen and empowered and energize those youth who stood before the tyrant ruler and he said our lord is one allah we will not hint or imply anything else because if we dare say this then that is completely incorrect and out of line You wouldn't want to say anything to your boss lest it compromises your potential job or your interview or your 13 check and in front of the tyrant ruler the dictator of the time Allah said we empowered so anyway Allah tells the mother of Musa put Musa we talking just to keep focus the three things are easy and we need to align ourselves we need to come out of the curses of Nabi alayhi salam you run in your business on interest Don't deceive me or the world with your umrah Allah and his nabis curse is with such a person 
That's not my words. I can't sugarcoat this for you in any way. That's the truth. Mu'ad radiallahu is in the throes of death. So people around him start crying. So he said, why are you crying? They said, Nabki ala al-ilm alladhi yanqati'u anna inda mawtik. We crying, you leaving with you will go a chunk of knowledge. Who will substitute it? He said, I am going, but the Quran and Hadith will remain till the end of time. فَأَعْرِذُوا عَلَى الْكَلَامِ فَأَعْرِذُوا كُلَّ شَيْءٍ عَلَى الْكَلَامِ وَلَا تَعْرِذُوهُ عَلَى شَيْءٍ مِنَ الْكَلَامِ So, analyze every piece of information through the light of Quran. And don't analyze the Quran through the view or the opinion or the column or the article of anyone. You've, you analyze whatever is being thrown out to you, put it through the lenses of the Quran. No, the Quran refutes this. No, the Quran doesn't allow me to buy into this here. No, the Quran is not on board. The Quran says, Allah is at war with me. Chapter close. Don't subject the Quran to your findings. Subject your findings to the Quran. And I promise you, this is a broad principle because today there's chaos in the world. There are many people, okay, we're going to digress and I don't want to go that way. So, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam's mom is told, put Musa in the basket, put the basket in the river Nile. Allah says, we gave her strength because we gave her strength, she could do it. And that's what it is. Allah gives you strength. Otherwise, how else can you physically, you know, continue? The ulama have written that Allah told Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam to slaughter his son. This is also I read in the writings of Hakim al-Ummah. That's the most supreme sacrifice that could be asked from any human. Because even if Allah were to tell Ibrahim, claim your own life, that also comparatively is easier. وَلَوْ أَنَّا كَتَبْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَنِقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ أَوْ اِخْرُجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ مَا فَعَلُوهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ مِّنْهُمْ Allah speaks about this and if we had to tell them to claim their own lives and he writes why the claiming of your own life is easier because to claim your own life on the will of Allah hypothetically if there was an injunction but there isn't that command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's a painful ordeal and a process from the time you receive the injunction till the time you execute it. But if Allah were to tell you as Allah told Sayyidina Ibrahim to offer and sacrifice his son, then it's painful from the time you receive the injunction and the pain continues after the execution because your child has moved on but the trauma lingers on. So... Look at this year and, and may Allah give us the ability to read the writings of our aslaf who had understood Quran and Sunnah. So Allah told her to put the child in the basket. Then Allah said, Wala takhafi, wala tahzani. Don't fear, don't grieve. So Hakim al it took me like, you know, I read over like 20, 30, 40 pages to gather this whole explanation of his which was mutafarriq, but it was so intriguing. He's asked the question, I'm giving you the verse, and I'm going to try and simplify it, so each one can appreciate how amazing the Quran is. Allah tells the mother, put the child in the basket. And then Allah restricts the mother and limits the mother, don't fear, don't grieve. He raises the question, how do we reconcile between the motherly love and the fact that grief and fear are non-voluntary emotions. They're rare ikhtiyari. You don't grieve by choice. You don't fear by choice. you gripped by grief. you gripped by fear. Yet categorically the Quran says don't fear, don't grieve. Wala takhafi, wala tahzani. He writes, Gham, and huzn is ghair ikhtiyari huduthan, but ikhtiyari baqaan. Oh my word. Oh my word. Quran is wara'ul wara. Then you want to tell us of psychology today. 
fear and grief are not voluntary by inception but they are voluntary by continuation the inception of fear is outside your control but to nip it in the bud to contain it or to allow it to consume you that's within your control grief can grip you that's natural it's going to grip you that's a human emotion you won't able to limit or restrict or block or bar the inception of grief but then for you to allow it to run with you and to consume you and incapacitate you and paralyze you that's within your your choice and he said how do you do that you don't remind yourself don't remind yourself and that's precisely what he ties up with soul don't tell yourself how long the fast is don't tell yourself how long the hours are what they tell you today in psychology focus on the positives that focus on the positives and divert your mind objectively that's the principle like every other principle you deduce from the quran and where do we learn where do we get the cue what did allah tell the mother of musa inna radduhu ilaik wa ja'iluhu min al-mursalin focus on the positive today he sails as an infant tomorrow he comes back as a prophet inna radduhu ilaik we will return him to you wa ja'iluhu min al-mursalin and we will make him amongst the prophets and the messengers so the message is don't focus because if you're going to remind yourself it's going to become cumbersome it's going to be difficult and then he also elaborates on, on the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then we'll start the talk where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that ya'ti ash-shaytan ahadakum the devil comes to you and he says man khalaqa kadha who created this then you say allah then the devil says who created the sky then you say allah then the devil comes and says man khalaqa rabbak who created your lord fa idha balaghahu falyasta'idh billah walyantahi when you reach that point then seek refuge in allah and desist and abstain now he raises the question walyantahi an ayyi shay desist from what if you say desist from waswasa desist from the thought or desist from the whisper then that i hope i'm not too academic here then that will mean that the the, the waswasa and the thought is ikhtiyari it's within your choice if you say wal yantahi anil waswasa that when the devil brings you to the point and he blocks you off and he corners you and he says okay who created you say allah who created this allah who created allah so when you get to the point the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is giving you the formula the recipe then seek refuge in allah and desist and abstain now desist from what if you say desist from waswasa and that is the whisper of the devil and of course that's the talent given to the devil wastavzis man istata'ta minhum bi sawtik sawtun those that are skilled in the exegesis of the quran will tell you too either it means music or it means the whisper of the devil but if you say it means abstain from whisper then it means whisper is within your control and he says hence it doesn't mean that wal yantahi anil iltifati ila al waswasa abstain from focusing on the whisper of the devil anyway that's academic coming back to the point the three people that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam endorsed of the curse of jibril is that they were given a simple thing and that mindset we need to have that mindset that fasting is there for my own purification as-sawmu ibadatu as-sadat wa ibadatu as-sadat sadatul ibadat as-sawmu ibadatu as-sadat wa ibadatu as-sadat sadatul ibadat wow you're going to appreciate this in arabic fasting is the worship of leaders and the worship of leaders is the leader of worship is the leader of worship so let's just analyze these three ahadith or these three people and coming back to my opening comments to align yourself physically you want to align you got to get rid and and if we have to compare between the two one is to eliminate the bad habits and one is to introduce the good diet everyone would agree that the former is more important than the latter because the impact of a good diet is very much dependent 
on how much you eliminate your body of the bad things. So if you still drink and you still smoke and you jog and you exercise and you have healthy things, but you minimize and compromise the impact of the good because of the bad habits. So you might be taking the dwarves of people, but you've hurt your parents and earned the curse of Jibreel. Where are you going to go with it? I've mentioned this and I say it, I found it to be one of the most profound quotations when it comes to speaking about parents. And it's in Arabic again. كُلَّمَا أَرَدْتُ أَنْ أَكْتُبْ عَنْ أُمِّي وَجَدْتُ نَفْسِي أُمِّي كُلَّمَا أَرَدْتُ أَنْ أَكْتُبْ عَنْ أُمِّي وَجَدْتُ نَفْسِي أُمِّي So um means mother and um also means unlettered. هُوَ الَّذِي بَعَثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَالُوا لَيْسَ عَلَيْنَا فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ سَبِيلٍ وَيَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ So it's Arabic, it's linguistics, it's semantics. In essence, the poet says, whenever I want to put pen to paper about how profound my mum is, I just find that I am mute and I'm dumb. I lack all skill and all, I'm, I, I, I'm just defeated. I don't know where to begin to speak about how great my mum is. The narration of Nasa'i, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu says, a person came to Nabi alayhi salatu was salam and he said, Inni adhnabtu dhamban azima. I've perpetrated a major crime. Fahalli min tawba. Is there any hope for me of tawba? So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Hallaka min ummin. Is your mom alive? He said, No. He said, Hallaka min khala. Is your maternal aunt alive? I said, Yes. The questioner said, Yes. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Fabirraha. Then go and serve your aunt. This will be an atonement and expiation for the crime and the offense you perpetrated. Is, uh, Ishaq bin Ismail says that I heard from Hussein and he said I heard from Muzahim ibn Zawad ibn Ulba. Ma ta'akhun li. I read this in Makarim al-Akhlaq. My brother had passed on. Wa kana barram bi abihi. And my brother was very faithful, dutiful and obedient to his father, to our father. فَرَأَيْتُهُ فِيمَا يَرَى النَّائِمِ So I seen him in a dream post his demise. And I said to him, إِنَّ أَبَاكَ يُحِبُّ أَنْ يَعْلَمْ إِلَىٰ أَيِّ شَيْءٍ سِرْتْ You've moved on, you passed away, but dad is pining to know how have things turned out for you in the next world. So how are you doing in Akhirah? And the key thing is he was very obedient to his father. So he said, إِنِّي فِي سِدْرٍ مَخْدُودٍ وَطَلْحٍ مَنْذُودٍ وَظِلِّمْ مَمْدُودٍ وَمَا إِمَّا سْكُوبٍ He said, you know where I am? He said, yeah, please tell me. I am in the thornless lotus trees of Jannah. إِنِّي فِي وَطَلْحِمْ مَمْدُودٍ So I am in these سِدْرِمْ مَخْدُودٍ The lotus trees, مَخْدُود The thorns are taken away. Then the fruit are layer upon layer. طَلْحٍ مَمْدُودٍ ظِلِّمْ مَمْدُودٍ This extended shade and cover. I probably mentioned this and if I haven't, then let me say it. And if I have, you know, for the benefit of those who have not. When I was once in France for a program and I will not forget this. And I had the last talk as I was leaving out to the airport. And it was just Arabs. And I gave a talk in Arabic in my broken, humble way. And as I concluded my talk and I was leaving... Then a sheikh came to me, an Arab brother, with his young daughter, about nine years old. And he's, lahda, lahda. And he brings her up. And, uh, you know, Qari Sahib Qari Saleh recited in the 11 Jews, Allah said, Ala inna awliya Allahi la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun Alladheena amanu wa kanu yattaqun Lahumul bushra, lahumul bushra Those who obey Allah, for them is glad tidings. The majority of the scholars expound on Bushra glad tidings as a good dream that they see or someone sees on their behalf. This is the majority of the scholars. There's almost ittifaq on the interpretation of Bushra. Yeah. So anyway, he says, I have my daughter. She had a dream last night. So please bring her. This is a sweet, innocent child. You know what? Pure, wholesome, nafsan zakiya, a clean soul. And she said, Ya Am. رأيت نفسي في الجنة البارحة. 
this girl is saying, Uncle, last night I seen myself in Jannah. The tears are just trickling down my eyes. And then Allah gave me this. I'm telling you one on one. She's telling it to me in Arabic as I'm narrating it to you. Then Allah gave me this fruit which looked very much like a banana. But munawwar. It was radiant. These were her words. I, it's indelible in my mind. It was bright. So I called my sister and she started eating along with me. Then I seen some other people and I called them, but the angels blocked them off. So I'm just crying and I said to the grandfather, to the father, I just embraced him. And I said that, you know what? There is great future in this dream. There is a great vision in this dream. And there is a great sayakunu laha sha'nun. There is a great future to her. May Allah protect her and, and you look after her. There is great prosperity lying ahead of her. So anyway, he says, I seen my brother in a dream. I asked my brother, how did you fare? This is what my brother told me. The mother of Mis'ar, the mother of Mis'ar, istasqat ummu Mis'arin minhu ma an fil layl. His mother asked him by night, my son, go fetch me some water. فَقَامَ فَجَاءَهَا بِهِ He stood up, he brought the water and came. وَقَدْ نَامَتْ When he came, she had fallen off to sleep. فَكَرِهَ أَنْ يَذْهَبْ فَتَطْلُبُهُ وَلَا تَجِدُهُ وَكَرِهَ أَنْ يُوْقِضَهَا فَلَمْ يَزَلْ قَائِمَا وَالْإِنَاءُ فِي يَدِهِ حَتَّى أَصْبَحْ So he stood, now when he came back with the vessel, he said, oops, my mom is sleeping. Do I nudge her, but then I'm disturbing her sleep. If I go away and perhaps her eyes open up and she looks and I'm not here. He stood with the vessel in his hand till the crack and the flush of dawn. And today's young boy wants growth in his life. Boy, will you take me to go visit uh, my sister? Yeah, mommy, how long? What time? You need to give me a time. You need to know, I need to know exactly. There's a brother who Allah has blessed with a lot of wealth and then his whole empire dipped and till today he cries. And he says, I try and make sense of how things backfired. This went, that went, that went. And every time I try and make sense, I hear a voice of pain of my late mom calling from within me. And he's a very learned man. He's a very learned person. He's invited me for lectures as well. And I continue to make dua for him and comfort him. And he says, it was nothing more than my busy periods. And my mom would call me. And I'm like, yeah, mom, I'm busy. Give me time. And I know those moments have actually, you know what, derailed my whole thing. Sufyan Thawri says, Qadima rajulum min safarin fasadafa ummahu qa'imatan tusalli. One person returned from journey and he found his mother in prayer. So he said, okay, well, my mother is standing in prayer, then how can I sit? So he stood. Like, wow. He came back and, and he got home. His mom was in salah. So he stood. So his mom realized that he's standing out of respect. He doesn't want to sit because I'm standing. So his mom consciously prolonged her salah so he can be rewarded by standing longer. Wallah, when you read these people, their prolonging was for right reasons. Their shortening were for correct reasons. We prolong for the wrong reasons. We shorten for the wrong reasons. فَأَسْمَعُ بُكَا أَسْصَبِيِّ فَأَتَجَوَّزُ فِي صَلَاتِ How I cry when I read this hadith of Bukhari. My Nabi, his salah was something you and I cannot begin to imagine. And he would be in prayer for extended time. And he said, if I ever have to hear a child cry, immediately I shorten my salah. Because that mom and child is now anxious and restless. I shorten my salah because the match is starting at 7. Even the Imam Allah gave a diet. No, no, really my brother. Really my brother. I shorten my prayer for the wrong reason. I lengthen for the wrong reason. 
اول من سن الركعتين عند القتل خبيب خبيب بن عدي was the first who introduced the two units of prayer prior to being executed on the order of Allah just give me a moment i just want to pray then you can execute me wow wow allahu akbar only he knows what he had in that salah he's so immersed he's so engrossed innahu yaraka hina taqum wa taqallubaka fi as-sajidin your hearts will burst my brother i'm watching you my nabi when you stand in and i'm also observing how you turn in amongst all those who prostrate in that salah he's so immersed and engrossed then he cuts it short and he says listen laula an tadannu anni innama tawwaltu jaza'an min al-maut lastakthartu min as-salah i was so engrossed and i was enjoying it but i feared you'll interpret the prolonged prayer as apprehension to death so i cut it short to let you know i'm not afraid of death wow fa alimat ma arad oh man my allah puts a flash in my heart now quran is wara ul wara quran is wara ul wara it's just beyond us beyond 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 so the 94th chapter of the quran surah al inshirah eight verses allah tells the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the seventh verse fa idha faraghta fansab wa ila rabbika farghab allah knows how i cry when i read this year and my pain my brother is that we just not connect into quran so allah tells nabi alayhi salam when you've completed your task see mariful quran there are other commentaries but this is the preferred tafsir and i'll give you a synopsis of what has been captured there under these two verses fa idha faraghta so the nabi of allah's entire life is in ibadah there are those acts of worship which are indirect and there are those acts of worship which are direct so serving the creation helping the needy feeding the poor conveying the message of allah that is also deen and da'wa and then there are those actions which are direct you physically in prayer you physically in prostration you recite in quran and mufti shafi sahab rahmatullah alayhi writes this verse sounds a strong message for people who are engaged in the service of deen that it does not suffice for you to say i'm helping the poor and the orphan or i am teaching after you've done that you need to be energizing yourself as well and then he gives an amazing that teaching is a lifelong thing but you can conclude it for the day helping the poor is something which will never end but you can wrap it for the day fa idha faragta fa idha faragta fa idha faragta when you've concluded when you've done when you've wrapped up when you've finalized fan sab then stand in prayer but the word nasab means fatigue so the linguistic expression of the ayah releases the message that don't only worship in ease and comfort but let worship be to the point that you exert yourself fan sab and then he further writes if you cannot tire yourself or exert then even iltizam of the awrad is no um min an nasab just to be punctual with your daily recitals that i won't go to sleep till i don't read my surah waqiah i won't go to take my nap in the morning till i don't perform my ishraq prayer or whatever it is that iltizam of the awrad is also that fa idha faraghta fansab فعلمت ما أراد فطولت ليوجر. wow. she realized that her her uh, son was standing in anticipation, so the mother lengthened the prayer. Ahmed ibn Jamil says that I heard from Fazari, and he says I heard from Abdullah, and he said سمعت هشاما يذكر عن الحسن that a person one came to Hassan Basri, and he said إني قد حججته. 
وقد اذنت لي امي في الحج that i have performed my obligatory hajj and my mom has consented for me to make an optional hajj so hasan basri said laqadatun taqduha ala maidatiha ahabbu ilayya min hajjik you know what your hajj is done if you sit one meal with your mother and you cheer her up and you feed her for me that meal takes you way closer to allah than an op optional hajj ان ابا هريره لم يحج حتى ماتت امه ابو هريره رضي الله عنه went for hajj only when his mom passed away علي بن جعد says that we heard from عمرو بن ميمون عمرو بن ميمون said لما تعجل موسى الى ربه when سيدنا موسى عليه السلام went to mount tour and he conversed and communicated with الله راى في ظل العرش رجلا so he seen a person by the throne of allah faghabithu bi makanihi so sayyidina musa envied him and i always say this my brother in the world i use the analogy of aviation but you can extend the implications that you be traveling in a common class be it first class business or economy for that matter person occupying the same class a seat next to you traveling in the same degree of comfort but he could have paid a very different fare to you he booked early he booked on sale he redeemed his miles uh, you paid so much more yet you enjoyed the same level in the very same way people in jannah might be next to you but each man will have a different action that got him there what got you your oh, home and i toiled so much no i was just kind to my mother and my allah took care of my dunya and my akhirat really all that was amazing wallahi i i don't know how many times i've said it about myself and i say it i have nothing 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 but i've seen miracles and i continue to see miracles and i say to you this is your quickest easiest safest way guaranteed your dunya and deen allah will take care take care of your parents but become obsessed with their khidma become obsessed with it yeah take it to another level where you dream their khidma You you pray their khidma, you sleep their khidma, you get excited when they disturb you. That's an accomplishment. That's a goal because that's going to turn for you. So Musa alayhi salam fasal rabbahu an yukhbirahu an ismihi. Allah who's this person what's his name? Falam yukhbirahu an ismihi. Allah didn't mention the name. The thing is the action. today we want to name no action the quran teaches us the action the name is not important allah speaks about the man who rescued his nation in surah yasin wa jaa rajulun min aqsa al madinati yas'a qala ya qaum ittabi'u al mursalin ittabi'u man la yas'alukum ajra wa hum muhtadun wa ma li la a'budu alladhi fatarani wa ilayhi turja'un look at the hikmat amali so he had accepted islam his nation had not accepted he didn't say ma lakum what's wrong with you you don't work wa ma li la a'bud why shouldn't i implying to them you need to because he had accepted it and then they mercilessly kill him and then when he gets into jannah he tells he expresses his sentiments oh i wish those that killed me actually realize where we are so they can change their life and end up in jannah wallah that's the person you killed a man in the masjid in juma salah he's in jannah his heart is crying out in jannah change your view understand islam so you can enjoy it what did the prophet of allah say nasaha qaumahu hayyan wa mayyita this man advised his nation while he was alive and khullida amaluhu wa lam yudhkar ismuhu khullida amaluhu wa lam yudhkar ismuhu his action has been enshrined engraved embedded part of the text of quran will remember tutla ila yawm al qiyamah but nobody knows his name So Musa alayhi salam asked Allah some say his name was Habib these are you know opinions I'm just mentioning this because someone say yeah but I read this so in case you read it I've also read it 
my brother, I don't have knowledge and you don't have knowledge. If you agree with me, good luck. Recently, the graduating ulama had asked me to give them a talk. So I said to them, I said, you know what's happening? Uh, the levels of ignorance is increasing. So we assuming we, we are more learned. We're not more learned. It's just people are getting more ignorant. So laymen are being perceived as learned. And I gave them this analogy. You're standing in a queue. There's five people in front of you. And the queue is not moving from the front, but the queue is getting longer at the back. So you're like, hey, no, no, we're right in front. Yeah, we're in the first five. You were in the first five from the word go, my friend. You're number five. Nothing has happened. There were five behind you. Now there's 55. You think you're closer than what you were. You're not, my brother. They get in further. So you've been perceived to be closer. Wallah, I don't have knowledge. The ummah don't have. Ignorance has become widespread. So people with basic knowledge have been perceived to be learned. Mali ara ulama akum yadhabun wa juhalakum la yata'allamun. Law sha'a ulama ukum lazdadu wa law iltamasahu juhalukum la wajaduhu. Abu Darda said, but what's wrong? What's wrong? Ulama are going, the others are just not making an effort to learn. And then he said, you have concerned yourself with something which Allah has taken upon himself and that's your sustenance. Ma takaffala lakum bihi Allahu azza wa jal. Allah said he's going to give you and you've concerned yourself. And there isn't a passion to enhance yourself or up yourself or better yourself. So Musa alayhi salam asked Allah, Allah said, I won't give you the name, I'll tell you his three qualities. Kana la nasa ala ma Allahu min fadli. Oh, he never had jealousy for anyone. He never had jealousy for anyone. I was now in reunion and I had to give a talk to the ulama there. So I was saying to them, the narration is in Hilya. Abu Nu'aym makes mention of it in Hilya. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu said, لا يكون الرجل من العلم بمكان حتى لا يحسد من فوقه ولا يحقر من دونه ولا يبتغي بالعلم ثمنا. لا يكون الرجل من العلم بمكان حتى لا يحسد من فوقه ولا يحقر من دونه you cannot occupy a respectable position amongst the ulama in the eyes of Allah until you don't harbor, until you don't stop harboring jealousy for those above you. You don't have a condescending eye on those that are lower than you and you don't put a price to your knowledge. How can you have a condescending eye? They had assigned one student there in reunion to be in my khidma. So he was from uh, Algeria. Arab brother of Arab descent, staying in France, but had come over to study. So mashallah, he made a lot of khidma. So I was making a lot of dua for him. So the principal held my hand. He said, may Allah reward you for the dua you made for him. That's very good. Maybe you want to spare that dua for his mom. She left the fold of Islam. Maybe you want to spare that dua for his mom now. I'm telling you fresh. So anyway, this person was blessed with that level of closeness. What were the actions? Number one, number <laughs> فقد آتينا آل إبراهيم الكتاب والحكمة. Are they jealous? Imam Ghazali writes in Al Bidaya wa Nihaya, فاشتغالك بطلب المخلص عن الهلاك أهم من اشتغالك بنوادر الفروع وعلم الخصومات. Ay, ay, Ghazali, Ghazali, Ghazali. It's more important to occupy yourself by flushing out those spiritual maladies than to engage in acquiring surplus additional access knowledge and information. You're going the extra mile. You're going into a speciality. You're going into takhassus. Good luck. فَإِشْتِغَالُكَ بِطَلَبِ المخلص عَنِ الْأَهْلَاكِ أَهَامْ Basics are not in order. Elementary is not in order. Number two, 
كان لا يعق والدي كان لا يعق والدي موسى this man never disobeyed his parents ولا يمشي بالنميمة and he never carried tails ولا يمشي بالنميمة he never carried tails a person came to Sayyidina Umar رضي الله عنه and he said إن أمي عجوز my mom is old أنا مطيتها I am her conveyance ألي منها ما كانت تلي مني I attend to her as she used to attend to me. Awa addaytu haqqaha? Have I discharged her right? He said, la, no. So the person said, but you haven't heard what I did for her. I'm paraphrasing. He said, لِأَنَّهَا كَانَتْ تَفْعَلُ ذَلِكْ وَتَدْعُوا اللَّهَ أَنْ يُطِيلَ عُمْرَكْ وَأَنْتَ تَفْعَلُ ذَلِكْ وَتَدْعُوا اللَّهَ أَنْ يُمِيتَهَا The difference is your mother toiled, you toiled. She toiled hoping that Allah gives you a longer life. You toiled hoping when does she, her life cease? When does her life end? Wallahi, I have been called into homes. And the brother says, Molna, you need to speak to my brothers. They need to realize it's their mother also. I said, but how dare you say that to yourself? Like Allah is giving you this. No, but he needs to know it's his mother as well. It's not only my mother. Oh man, I literally walked out. I said, you guys can't be calling me to help reconcile between the quarreling parties when you don't have the basic, decent, dignity, respect and decorum. You're not talking of an employee or a helper or a social worker. You're talking of your biological mom. Sifatun barizatun lil anbiya. A common denominator amongst all the anbiya. My opening comments, my brother, we spoke of the hadith in case you wonder where we are, right? These are three things. We said we need to rid ourselves of the curse of Allah and his Nabi and then do the things that will bring barakah and you'll see how it happens, man. Wallahi, I, you'll see things beyond your imagination. Like, Ya Allah, oh, there's another dua of my mother. Ya Allah, oh, there's another dua of my dad. I just cry and cry the places, the locations, the points. I just say, Allah, this is unim I couldn't even imagine myself. But yes, when du'as of parents have been earned, then it just happens. Allah speaks about Nuh alayhi salam, Rabbi ghfir li wa li walidayya wa li man dakhala bayti mu'mina. Allah forgive me, forgive my parents and those who enter my house, which Madariq al-Tanzil alama nasafi says, ay wa li man dakhala safinati. Those who bought my ark, making dua for his parents. And then in, in Madarik al Tanzil, Abdullah ibn Abbas's tafsir is mentioned so amazing, man, so amazing. He said, Nuh alayhi salam made two duas. Ihdahuma lil mu'minina bil maghfira wa ukhra ala al kafirina bit tabar. Waqad ujibad da'watuhu fi haqqil kuffar. Fastahala Allah tustajaba da'watuhu fi haqqil mu'minin. He made one dua, وَلَا تَزِدِ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا تَبَارًا Allah, those that are disobedient, wipe them off. And that was after he was told that nobody will accept Islam. وَأُوحِيَ إِلَى نُوحٍ أَنَّهُ لَنْ يُؤْمِنَ مِنْ قَوْمِكَ إِلَّا مَنْ قَدْ آمَنْ My brother, connect yourself to Qur'an. When he was told nobody was going to accept, so he said, Allah, wipe them out. And he just said, Rabbi Anni Maghloob, Allah, I'm overpowered, Fantasir, assist. But he complied, he obliged, he obeyed. And then it was a dua that was half a line. And the stronger view is that the floods were around the globe. There's two opinions. One is it was in that area and the other opinion was right across. And the oven starts boiling. There's like four opinions to Tanuria, what it's meant. But anyway... So the curse of Nuh was accepted. So all the more his dua in the favor of the believers will be accepted. Then Allah speaks of Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam. Ya abati fa'al ma tu'mar. Satajiduni insha'allahu min as-sabirin. Oh my dad, do what you have been told. You'll find me amongst those that persevere. Allah speaks of Yusuf alayhi salam. Falamma dakhalu ala Yusuf awa ilayhi abawayhi. When his parents entered, he entertained them. And in Qurtubi, I read myself that when finally the secret was revealed, he said to his brothers, وَأْتُونِي بِأَهْلِكُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ Bring your entire family and come. Allama Qurtubi writes under بِأَهْلِكُمْ 
bring your family. He says Yusuf alayhisalam's actual intention was to have his parents over. Now either it was his father with his mankuha, the wife of his father because his mom had moved on as the stronger view at the birth of Binyamin. And some linguistically, semantically even argue that Binyamin means waj'ul wilada, that labor pain and that resulted, but it's a historical narration. Anyway, it means parents, either it was the father and the mankuha, whoever was the spouse of Yaqub alayhi salam. So the reason he said, Wa'atuni bi ahlikum, he actually, because he was in Egypt, and this is where he needed to honor them, he couldn't travel to Canaan, so he needed to come there. So he found it disrespectful to say, bring my parents here. So he said, bring the whole family, which then included the parents. So there isn't a verbal expression of disrespect. And Qurtubi also mentioned something else there. قَالُوا يَا أَبَانَ اسْتَغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا خَاطِئِينَ When the brothers came and they said, Oh, our dad, ask Allah to forgive us. He said, Sofa, Sofa. He was a Nabi. His dua was answered. He was a father. His dua was answered. He said, Soon I will make a dua for you. He said he delayed the dua to the last portion of the night, knowing that it's more readily accepted. You know, I must mention something I read now in Bayanul Quran, just on the topic of Yusuf alayhi salam, and I have a flash of it. So when Yusuf alayhi salam was reunited with his brothers, then he said, La tathriba alaykum al No reproach. I've closed the chapter. We're done. I forgave you. It's done. It's over. Move on. So in Bayanul Quran, it's mentioned there in Masail al-Suluk with reference to Shah Kirmani. Wow. Allah is my witness. When I read it, it started jumping. My wife said, what happened? I said, come read. Come read. Oh man. Then we read in Gazette and perusing porn and we on these devices and we hooked onto this. What has happened? Well, you know what they say? Nafsku marne ka hukam ta ya to zameer mare pare hai. Nafsku marne ka hukam ta ya to zameer mare pare hai. Wah! The order was to annihilate your ego. Yeah, the hearts are dead. Yeah, the hearts are dead. Kill your ego. Yeah, the hearts are dead. Ma sha'arna bil Quran. Ma taladhadna bil Quran. It's like it just doesn't do anything to us. So under this la tathriba in Bayanul Quran in Masail al-Suluk with reference to Shakir Mani is written, why could Yusuf salam in one go wipe out the crime of four decades of his siblings? And listen to this. Whoa. He says, I'm going to simplify here. He says, those who view the actions of the creation with the direct eye, the apparent eye, they get stuck in squabbles and altercation and feuds for their whole life. Yeah, but my wife defaulted me. Yeah, but my brother was nasty to me. Yeah, but my neighbor, I'll never forgive him. Why did he do this? Why? And they try to prove their innocence and exonerate themselves. But the pious view the actions of the creation as instruments to execute the plan of Allah. So they look beyond. I'm not looking at you. This is what my Allah had decreed for me. This is what my Allah had decreed for me. So thank you for dropping me in the well because that's when the caravan picked me up and that's how I came to the auction in Egypt and that's how the whole story of Musa alayhi salam, Pharaoh benefited him the most. He said the pious, they rise above, they don't stagnate, they don't view it with the inner eye. You just the means there. That was what Allah had decreed for me. In a'taita, فَإِنَّ الْمُعْتِي هُوَ اللَّهُ وَأَنْتَ مَشْكُورُ وَإِنْ مَنَعْتَ فَإِنَّ الْمَانِعَ هُوَ اللَّهُ وَأَنْتَ مَعْذُورُ In a'tayt, if you approve, you endorse, you sanction, you give me the job, then honestly, the real thing is my Allah approved it, but because you're a means, you'll be appreciated. I'm not going to discredit you. وَإِنْ مَنَعْتَ And if you've refused, my Allah actually has declined, but you'll be excused. Well, I read this in the writings of Mawlana Abrar Sahib Rahmatullah Ali Fadeh Abrari. 
قال لا تثريب عليكم اليوم يغفر الله لكم وهو أرحم الراحمين اذهبوا بقميصي هذا فألقوه على وجه أبي and they say قميص only appears in the whole Quran three times and all three times in this chapter and that surah Yusuf and they say sometimes the cause of your depression is the cause of your joy the very shirt of Yusuf which resulted in you Yaqub losing his sight became the cause of his vision being restored sometimes the child that's most turbulent to you when he's young becomes the greatest source of joy in the latter years of your life so sifatun barizatun lil anbiya allah speaks of yahya alayhi salam wa barran bi walidayhi wa lam yakun jabbaran asiya Allah speaks of Isa alayhi salam wa barram bi walidati wa lam yaj'alni jabbaran shaqiyya The hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu narrates it Are we good for time? Are we all okay? Jazakallah A person came to Nabi alayhi salam Man ahakku al-nasi bi husni al-suhbah O Nabi of Allah who deserves my best relationship? Nabi Sassam said, your mother. Okay, but after her? No, no, your mother again. All right, that's fine, but after her? Your mother again. Ummuk, thumma man, thumma ummuk, thumma man, thumma ummuk, thumma abuk. Then who? Then your father. Alama Turtushi writes, Ja'ala al-Nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thalathata arba'il birri lil-um warrubu' lil-ab. Nabi alayhi salam has assigned three quarters of your obedience, your diligence, your compliance, your servitude to your mom and then a quarter to your dad. وَذَلِكَ لِسُعُوبَةِ الْحَمْلِ ثُمَّ الْوَضْعِ ثُمَّ الرَّضَعِ فَهَذِهِ تَنْفَرِدُ بِهَا الْأُمُّ وَتَشْقَى بِهَا ثُمَّ تُشَارِكُ الْأَبَى فِي التَّرْبِيَةِ Why? Because she conceived you. Then she delivered you. Right? I cry because my mom always tells me about a gland that she had... I get emotional, I move on. Anyway, so uh, she conceived you, then she delivered you, and she nursed you. She nursed you. So because of that, three quarters. And in that she was exclusive and she was unique. Then she joined hands with the father in raising the child. وَقَدْ وَقَعَتِ الْإِشَارَةُ إِلَى ذَلِكَ فِي قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى Like this deen of ours is so beautiful, man. وَوَصَّيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْ حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنٍ وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنِ فَسَوَّ بَيْنَهُمَا فِي الْوِصَايَ وَخُسَّ الْأُمُّ بِالْأُمُورِ الثَّلَاثَةِ حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنٍ وَفِصَالُهُ It's just beyond me, man. So Allah says, and we have impressed and ordained upon man kindness to your parents. In that Allah said both, mother and father. Then Allah highlighted the mom on three. حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنٍ وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنِ His mom carried him weakness upon weakness and then she lactated and nursed and suckled him for two years. يَسْأَلُونَكَ مَاذَا يُنْفِقُونَ Oh Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they're asking you what must they spend? And in Bayan al-Quran, and upon whom must they spend? In the siyaq and the sabaq of the ayah. What must they spend and on whom must they spend? Tell them there's no better place to spend their money than their parents. قُلْ مَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلِلْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَبْنِ السَّبِيلِ My brother, when you spend on your parents, I was uh, in Sri Lanka, so a brother insisted to take me for a massage, male therapist. I like to qualify this wherever we were in Bahama and I mentioned this and my wife was there and there was, you know, it was the island and there was like a thousand people. So I said I was, in, I was in an island and I went for a massage. Male therapist, male therapist. I looked at my wife, she nodded. I'm like, okay, we together. 
So he took me to a very up-class, exclusive, expensive uh, massage parlor. So I said, let me just here on the run somewhere, man, you know? The airport, little loosen up, you gotta not just relax it. And he says, no, no, this is up-class, very beautiful. Told them of the music, my priest and everything. So when we came out of there, I asked him, how much it costs you? He said, when I spend on others, I don't look at the bill. When I spend on myself, that's the time I make his of myself. Imagine you go and buy your mother's medication and you come and look at the price. Woe be to your wealth. The woman who didn't know night and day and you come out and know, mommy, we can buy generic. Mommy, we can look, wait, wait, I'll see somewhere else. That's not the time to look at your bill and your receipt. When you go and splash on your own comforts and hobbies and luxuries, that's the time, look at and budget and do your hisab, but not when you're spending on your parents or on anyone else for good reasons. I said to him, greater than your massage was the lesson you have taught me today, my brother. And I, I keep on learning. When I was now in a reunion, the principal there said to me something and it hit my heart. So he's running the madrasa for 20 years, Maulana Zakaria, may Allah bless him. So mostly students from France. So he said that uh, whenever I had to expel a student for compelling reasons, I say to him, to madrasa se kharij, lekin dil se kharij nahi. You expel from the madrasa, but not from my heart. So he said there was a young man from France that came and he had a, he had a history to his life. And he was involved, he was a revert, became a Muslim, then he had some habits, then he had, uh, he was in the music industry. So anyway, we tolerated him and kept him in the madrasa. And then uh, after a period of time, there were some issues, so we had to release him. So respectfully, we told him, you need to leave, but you're not free from my heart, you're in my heart. He said, two, three years later, I went to a function, it's at the coast, at the beach, and I get there and I see someone is playing the piano. And he's playing the lyrics and the piano. And it's at night. And we went out to have ice cream. And he's telling me this. I dropped the ice cream and I'm listening. This is three weeks ago. And I'm listening. I said, Amen, this is my student. So I went up to him. I said, Yusuf. He says, yes. I hugged him. I kissed him. I said, come with me. He says, now he's back in Madrasa. He's doing his Fatiha Alim course. When I gave the talk, I said, first, let me meet him. I want to meet this boy. I said, wow, what a lesson you've taught me, my brother. What a great lesson of life that you expel from the madrasa, but you're not expelled from my heart. My heart is open for you at all times. I said to this brother, you've taught me a lesson. Not when you recently, again, another man came to me. My dad is old and I'm taking care of the cost of his medication. Now, am I entitled to claim this from the estate when my father dies? I said, Allah has given you money. He said, yes. I said, for Allah's sake, man, this is your last week. I said, how old is Papa? He said, 90. I said, really, you want to make this money back? Are you seriously asking? I want my share. Like, where is the world gone, my Allah? Ya la fasad al-dhawq, ya la su'il ikhtiyar. You know, Allah Ma'abul Hassan Ali Nadwi says, when Bani Israel asked for food, لَن نَصْبِرَ عَلَى طَعَامٍ وَاحِدٍ so he says, أَطْعَامَ الْفَلَّاحِينَ بَدْلَ طَعَامَ الْمُلُوكِ أَطْعَامَ الْفَلَّاحِينَ بَدْلَ طَعَامَ الْمُلُوكِ يَا لَفَسَادَ الذُّوقِ يَا لَفَسَادَ الذُّوقِ We've lost our taste, we've lost our priorities. What actual signs do you have if you sit in and analyzing how much you spend and where you can save on your mom? No man, no man, really. We're not on, we're not on the same page. In fact, Ibn Taymiyyah has mentioned in his fatawa that ala al-walad al-musir an yunfiq ala abawayhi. If Allah has given you wealth, then part of your duty is to lavishly spend on your parents. And more so if they don't have. Wa illam yaf'al kana aqqan li abihi, qati'an li rahimihi, mustahiqan li uqubati Allahi fi dunya wal akhira. And if you haven't done this, then your umrah brings you no barakah. If you're not spending on your parents, 
you have severed ties, you are disobeyed Allah, and you are a victim of the wrath of Allah for as long as you live in that condition. And Abdul Aziz ibn Abi Rawad said, I read in another kitab, إِذَا كَانَ الرَّجُلُ بَارًا بِأَبَوَيْهِ فِي حَيَاتِهِمَا ثُمَّ لَمْ يَقْضِي دُيُونَهُمَا بَعْدَ مَوْتِهِمَا وَهُوَ يَسْتَطِيعُ ذَلِكْ كُتِبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَاقْ كُتِبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَاقْ If a person seen to his parents while they were alive and then the parents passed away and they left behind debts and he did not discharge the debts after having the ability despite of his lifelong obedience because he didn't settle their debts he will be written as a disobedient son i won't forget this i was in seychelles i met a young man whom allah has blessed with a lot of wealth so he got speaking he said i was living hand to mouth breaking even I didn't obey my parents. My pa father passed away. He left behind serious debts. I said, Ya Allah, my whole life I didn't obey them. Let me start off by taking care of the debts of the liabilities of my father. Maybe that is somewhere. He said, I cleared the debts and I seen barakat in my life like I never seen. Yas'aloona ka madha yunfiqoon. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhu said, Thalathu ayatin. نزلت مقرونة بثلاث و... و... ثلاث آيات نزلت مق... three verses were revealed with three verses لم يقبل منها واحدة بغير قرينتها one will not be accepted unless it's paid up with the verse that it was revealed with together اطيع الله واطيع الرسول فمن اطاع الله ولم يطع الرسول لم يقبل منه أقيم الصلاة وآت الزكاة فمن صلى ولم يزكي لم يقبل منه أن يشكر لي ولوالديك فمن شكر الله ولم يشكر لوالديه لم يقبل منه ابن عباس's words where my words Allah revealed three verses with three obey Allah and His Nabi if you obey Allah and you don't obey Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you're going nowhere in fact you won't able to obey Allah without Nabi Alayhi Salam how are you going to obey Allah without Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wassalam أقيم الصلاة وآت الزكاة فمن صلى ولم يزكي establish prayer and discharge zakah if you pray and you don't discharge zakah that will be insufficient for your salvation أن يشكر لي ولوالديك فمن شكر الله ولم يشكر لوالدي be grateful to Allah and to your parents if you're grateful to Allah and not to your parents you haven't been grateful to Allah عبادة بن سامت رضي الله عنه says I was out in a campaign I was out in a campaign I was out in a campaign with Nabi alayhi salam and then uh, my mom became ill. So those around, Hadharat ummahu al-wafatu. His mom was now on the throes of death. So they said to the mom of Sa'ad bin Ubadah radiallahu anhu, Ousi, you can make a bequest. So she said, Fima Ousi, al-malu malu Sa'din. What do I say? I don't have any money. Wealth belongs to my son. It's my son's money. Anyway, she passed away, radiyallahu anha. So when Ubada radiyallahu anhu returned, ذكروا ذلك له. They said, your mom was ill. We told her to make a bequest. She said, I have nothing. Whatever I have, it's my son's, your money. So he asked Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, أَيَنْفَعُهَا أَنْ أَتَصَدَّقْ عَنْهَا Now my mother has passed away. If I give charity, will it help my mother's soul? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, yes. So immediately he said, حَائِتُ فُلَانْ he said, this orchard, which belongs to me, I've given it charity as it is in the path of Allah on the name of my mother. We'll sit down, make mashwara and decide. A good friend of mine, his mom passed away in India. So he makes a lot of mashwara. So I always, in my humble way, I know nothing, but a little bit, I keep on telling him, whenever, I just, just look after your mother. Just look after her. Just look after her. Spend on her every month. Just spoil her, splash her, pamper her. Just go to town. Budget everything but your mother. So he always thanks me and he says, Allah has given me loads of barakah. So I told him, now your mother's passed away. Whatever money you were given monthly, this is the ideal time. You continue and increase and for isale sawab. So he said, Allah reward you immediately. I've started and I've, you know, contracted to do something. Now, just about two, three weeks ago, she passed away. Rahimahallah. Allah Manawawi writes under this hadith, 
هذا الحديث يدل على جواز الصدقة للميت وأن ثوابه يصله وينفعه that this hadith is a basis to establish that charity on behalf of your disease, on behalf of your parents will definitely benefit them or on behalf of any disease. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu makes mention of a narration Nabi alayhi salam said, Inna Allah la yarfa'u ad-darajata lil'abdi salih fil jannah. Sometimes Allah elevates an abode for a person in jannah. So he asks Allah, Allah, like I appreciate this on what grounds? So Allah says, Bistighfari waladika lak. Your son makes dua for you every day. That is why you're going higher and higher in Jannah. Abu Malik radiallahu anhu says, we were sitting with Nabi alayhi salatu was salam. A person came and he said, هَلْ بَقِيَ مِنْ بِرِّ أَبَوَيَّ شَيْءٌ أُبِرُّهُمَا بِهِ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهِمَا I was very obedient to my parents while they were alive. They've moved on. Is there any obligation I have post their demise? So Nabi sallallahu alayhi salatu was salam said, As-salatu alayhima, make dua for them. وَالْإِسْتِغْفَارُ لَهُمَا Ask Allah to forgive them. وَإِنْفَاذُ عَهْدِهِمَا Discharge their due, discharge their pledges. وَإِكْرَامُ صَدِيقِهِمَا And to be kind and faithful and loyal to their friends. فَقَالَ الرَّجُلُ مَا أَتْيَبَا مَا أَتْيَبَا مَا أَتْيَبَا So this man was excited, elated. Wow, this is awesome, this is amazing. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فَعْمَلْ بِهِ Now practice upon it. You've been the executive of the trust. You've winded up the estate. You know exactly what the desire of your father was. Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu said, Nabi alayhi salam told me, لو قد جاء مال البحرين أعطيتك هكذا وهكذا وهكذا. If the wealth of Bahrain come to me, Jabir, I'll give you like this and I'll give you like this and I'll give you like this. فلم يجيء مال البحرين حتى قبض النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. The wealth of Bahrain didn't come and Nabi Sasan passed away. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu became in charge of the Khilafah. He said, Man kana lahu inda nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idatun aw daynun fal ya'tina. Anybody has a claim to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, come to me. So I came to him and I said, Abu Bakr, I don't have a written document. But Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day called me and he said, Jabir, I don't have. But if the wealth of Bahrain comes, I will give you like this and I will give you like this. Fahatha li hathya. So Abu Bakr, infadhu ahdihima. Infadhu ahdihima. You know what was the dream of your father. You know what was the passion of your father. You know who was the baby in the heart of your father. You know that. You know that. And by you giving that sibling, you're not depriving. You bring in more goodness in your life. So Abu Bakr took with two hands full of coins and he gave it to me. فَعَدَدْتُهَا فَإِذَا هِيَ خَمْسُ I counted it was 500. He said, خُذْ مِثْلَيْهَا now take two folds again because you said Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Hakada wa Hakada wa Hakada. Ah, man barra walidai tuba lahu zad Allahu fi umrihi. Muad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu's narration. Nabi Alayhi Salatu was Salam said, the one who's kind to his parents, good luck to him and good luck, good luck. Allah will bless him with a long life. Allah will bless him with a long life. The ulama give two interpretations. Imma kinayatun. عن البركة في العمر بسبب التوفيق في الطاعة وعمارة الوقت بما ينفع في الآخرة وصيانته عن تضييعه في غير ذلك. إذا بركة in life means this man will spend his time correctly. He might not have a long life. What they say in English, a long life is not necessarily a good life, but a good life is a long life. A long life. Is not necessarily a good life. But a good life is a long life. So Allah will give him barakah. Imma kinayatun anil barakah. Bi sabab it tawfiqi fi ta'ah. Allah will give him a long life. Allah will give him the ability to do a'mal. A'mal. He will do a'mal. There are people in this time, I know that do a'mal. Inconceivable. But the fact that they do in it is a proof that the ummah has the isti'adad if we want to do it. وَصِيَانَتُهُ عَنْ تَضِيعِهِ فِي غَيْرِ ذَلِكِ And Allah will save him from wasting his time in the wrong things. أَوْ تَكُونُ الزِّيَادَ مَحْمُولَ عَلَى حَقِيقَتِهَا Or then, barakah in life will mean literally, Allah will literally extend his life. And that's the famous academic discussion which scholars have of الْقَضَاءُ الْمُبْرَمْ and الْقَضَاءُ الْمُعَلَّقْ so one is the confirmed destiny and one is the conditional destiny. So the angel in charge is told that if this person obeys his parents, he will live for 100 years. 
And if he disobeys his parents, he will live for 60. So this angel doesn't know the ultimate. And this will change if he'll obey or if he doesn't. But Allah knows he will obey, so he will live 200 because Allah's knowledge can never go wrong. And this is what has been referenced in the Quran in Surah Al-Ra'd. يَمْحُوا اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيُثْبِتُ وَعِنْدَهُ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ There's a whole academic discussion. Anyway, let's just move forward. We want to speak on the other aspects as well. Time is running out. One hadith in this regard, concluding the aspect here. We said the three people, Nabi alayhi salam, curse. Come out of the curse of Jibreel. That's the first thing, to align your life. If your mother is in a grave or she's alive, but if she's cursing you. See, if your mother is wrong, that's a wrong between her and Allah. But she's still your Jannah. If your father is wrong, that's a vice between him and Allah. But he's still your door to Jannah. We need to be clear on this. Listen to this narration. Abu Musa Ash'ari came to Nabi alayhi salam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Where's this woman... Uh, so and so that was amongst your tribe. So we said, Tarakna fi ahliha. She's back at home amongst the people. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Fa inna Allaha ghafaraha. Ghafara laha. Allah has forgiven her. So we said, Why, O Nabi of Allah? So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Li birriha li walidatiha wa hiya mushrika. Musannaf ibn Abdul Razak makes mention of it and Ghalib and Hakim as well. Allah forgave her and gave her Jannah because of how she served her non-Muslim mother. She was a Muslim because that's the prerequisite of entry into Jannah that we know, that's basic. <laughs> so her nation was attacked. So she carried her mother in the blistering heat. And every time she needed to rest because of the weight of her mom, basatat rijleha, she would spread her legs out on the scorching ground and then she would rest her mom on her shin, on her feet, so that the mom doesn't feel the heat of the ground. So then her feet would roast in that interim and she's serving her non-Muslim, Allah gave her Jannah. And then there's this beautiful couplets also. Allah says that فَضَلَّتْ مَطِيَّتَهَا حَافِيَةً مِنْ حِذَارِ الْعُدَاتِ لِتُرْضِي رَبًّا شَدِيدَ الْقُوَى وَتَذْفَرْ مِنْ نَارِهِ بِالنَّجَاتِ فَهَذِهِ وَصَاتِ فَكُونُوا لَهَا طَوَالَ الْحَيَاتِ رُعَاتَ الرُعَاتِ Where a person advises his nation and he says أَلَا أَبْلِغًا أَيُّهَا الْمُغْتَدِي O oh brother that is leaving early morning, بَلِّغْ بَنِيَّ جَمِيعًا وَبَنَاتِ Tell my sons and my daughters and tell the ummah, بِأَنَّ وَصَاتِ بِتَقْوَ الْإِلَاهِ I reiterate the sentiments of fear in Allah. وَلَقَدْ وَصَّيْنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Fear Allah. وَكُونُوا كَوَحْرَةَ فِي بِرِّهَا And serve your mother like a wahra served her mother. تَنَالُوا الْكَرَامَةَ بَعْدَ الْمَمَاتِ You'll see what Allah will do in this world for you and in Akhira. وَقَتْ أُمَّهَا بِشَوَاهَ الرَّمِيذِ وَقَا يَقِي وِقَايَ She rescued, she buffered, she protected, she insulated her mom. وَقَدْ أَلْهَبَ الْقَيْذُ نَارَ الْفَلَاتِ In the blistering and sweltering heat. فَضَلَّتْ مَطِيَّتَهَا Her back became a conveyance for her mom. حَافِيَةً She was barefoot. مِنْ حِذَارِ الْعُدَاتِ to rescue her mom from the hostility of the enemy. لِتُرْضِي رَبًّا شَدِيدَ الْقُوَى All that she did was to please Allah. And Allah became pleased and Allah gave her Jannah. May Allah make us amongst those fortunate people who can serve their parents. رَجُلَانِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ كَانَ أَبَرَّا Aisha رضي الله عنه said two people were the most kind to their mom in this whole ummah. One was Uthman bin Affan and one was Haritha bin Nu'man. Both of them were the most kind, the words of Aisha radiallahu anha. Anyway, 
to just touch briefly on the aspect of Saum as well. Right? Because Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cursed. He cursed the person who finds the month of Ramadan and does not earn forgiveness through fasting. So the ulama say that there are two types of fast for a believer. One is the fast from dawn to dusk and one is the one from puberty to death. Ad-dunya kulluha shahru siyamin lil muttaqeen wa'idu fitrihim yawma liqa'i rabbil alameen. Ad-dunya kulluha shahru siyamin lil muttaqeen. This whole world is a fasting month for the believer. And iftar will be the day we meet Allah, may Allah make us amongst those people. وَمُعْظَمُ نَهَارِ الصِّيَامِ قَدْ ذَهَبْ And the greater chunk of this day is over, my brother. It's over. Time is running. How much more is there left to fast? How much more is there left to fast? قَدْ سُمْتُ عَنْ لَذَّاتِ دَهْرِي كُلِّهَا to restrain, to abstain, to manage yourself. Because that is, in essence, a somu fil lugha al imsak. Wa kullu mumsik fa huwa sa'im. The linguistic meaning is abstinence. Wa dhamma a'rabiyun qawman faqal yasumuna anil ma'roof wa yuftiruna ala al fawahish. Wah. Wah, yiddihati log bhi kamal karte hai. Wa dhamma a'rabiyun qawman. Life, this world, what someone said in the Urdu language, تو بے جان سا پتر بھی نہیں ہے تو فرشتہ اور پیمبر بھی نہیں ہے تو حلم کا چشمہ اور سمندر بھی نہیں ہے پر تو اپنے رب کی نگاہوں میں کمتر بھی نہیں ہے تو جو کچھ بھی ہے اپنی حدوں کو پہچان تو رحمان کے پکر سے باہر بھی نہیں ہے واہ you are not a lifeless object. You are not inanimate. Right? To bejan sa patr bhi nahi hai. To farishta aur peyambar bhi nahi hai. You are not angelic or you are not a prophet either. To hilm ka chashma aur samandar bhi nahi hai. You are not a fountain or an ocean of knowledge. Par tu apne rab ki nigaho mein kamtar bhi nahi hai. But it's not like you hold no value in the eyes of Allah. I can say it in poetry. I can say it to you in ten languages. But I cannot say to you as Allah has said it. Afa hasibatum anna ma khalaqna kum abatha. Wa ma khalaqna samaa wal arda. Wa ma baynahuma laaibin. Law aradna an nattakhith lahwa. Lattakhathnahu min ladunna. I haven't created you futile. I don't intend to do anything futile. Allah, but, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yasifoon. Allah is way amma yaquluna uluwan kabira. Allah is way exalted over what they blurt and utter. You are not meaningless. There is a purpose to jo kuch bhi hai apni hado ku pehchan. Whatever you are, understand your boundaries. Understand your limits. Tu rab ki pakar se bahar bhi nahi hai. You are not outside the grip of Allah. Ya ma'ashar al-jinni wal-insi in istata'atum an tanfudhu min aqtari s-samawati wal-ardi fanfudhu. Al-amru lil-ijz. Al-amru lil- Ids, fanfudu. Oh, human and jinnat, in istata'atum, if you have the muscle and the cloud, to transcend beyond the parameters of the heavens and the earth. Do it, do it, show me, flex your muscles, show me your cloud, what you can do. You can't do nothing. La tanfuduna illa. دنیا دل میں نہ بسا اس لئے کہ دنیا کی محب دنیا کی حقیقت مچر کے کسی پر کے برابر بھی نہیں ہے so understand your limits understand your limits that's what we need to know so anyway the poet says يسومون عن المعروف or the Bedouin said that what kind fast is this they abstain from virtue and indulge in vice افطار 
in juristic language, in fiqh, they use iftar for three meanings. It means not to fast, it means to break your fast, and to open your fast. The word aftara in, in fiqh, someone who's not fasting is aftara, someone who broke his fast during the course of the day is aftar, and at the time of iftar. So, yasumuna anil ma'roof, they abstain from virtue, right? Wa yuftiruna alal fawahish, and they indulge in, in the forbidden. Abu Amama radiallahu anhu came to Nabi alayhi salam and he said, Murni bi amalin. Oh, Nabi of Allah, I'm, I'm kind of starting my descent. Oh, Nabi of Allah, give me some advice. So, Nabi sallallahu said, Alayka bi sawm, fa innahu la mithla lahu. Fast. There's no equal to it. Observe the fast. People come to you for advice. You say, recite Quran. Yeah, no, I know, but give me some advice. I mention now, this happens to me all the time, even now when I was in UK. Literally, I spoke for two hours, 15 minutes. I came down, a youngster came to me, Wallahi, Shaykh, I really want advice from you. What was I doing here? <laughs> Blowing what air? <laughs> no, give me some advice. Now, you, of course, it's a moment to show akhlaq and, and be, you know, dignified. But, hello? Like, to... Oh, Nabi of Allah, give me advice. Alayka bi sawm. Observe fast. There's nothing equal to it. Fama ru'iya abu umama walam ra'atuhu wala khadimuhu illa suyyama. From that day onwards, Abu Umama radiallahu anhu, his wife, his servant, whenever you seen them, they were fasting. Look at the, 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 the next portion of the hadith. Fakana idha ru'iya fi darihim dukhanun bin nahar yuqal Nazal bihim nazil. Wow. 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 So at home in the day, there was never smoke because Nabi Sassim told him fast. So you know that family, wife, husband, and servant fasting. So if one day you pass and you smell it, it says, looks like there's some visitors here. Otherwise, this family would have been fasting. Wow. Imam Ghazali says that, Anna li sawmi khasisatun laysat li ghayrihi. Fast has one speciality, nothing else has it. وَهِيَ إِضَافَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَكَفَى بِهَذِهِ الْإِضَافَةِ شَرَفَى أَصْصَوْمُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْزِي بِهِ That Allah has directed it to himself. Allah has directed it to himself. And uh, what more do you need? كَمَا شَرَّفَ الْبَيْتَ كَمَا أَضَافَ الْبَيْتَ إِلَى نَفْسِهِ وَطَهِّرْ بَيْتِيَ لِلطَّائِفِينَ وَالْقَائِمِينَ As Allah said, clean my house. What an honor, my house. Right? And the ulama make mention about this also in the Quran. كُلِّ عِبَادِي كُلِّ عِبَادِي Oh, Muhammad s.a.w. tell my servants. Tell my servants. Because the world is such... When things are good, then it's yours. And when it's not good, then it's somebody else's. When the brothers of Yusuf wanted bin Yamin, then they said, Muni'a minna al-kaylu. Muni'a minna al-kaylu. Oh, our father, we've been denied from measure. Fa'arusil ma'ana akhana naktal wa inna lahu lahafidun. Send with us our brother. We'll bring additional grain for him and we will protect him. So Yaqub alayhi salam said, you'll protect him like how you protected Yusuf, right? قَالَ هَلْ آمَنُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ إِلَّا كَمَا أَمِنْتُكُمْ So there they said, the ulama have deduced this, they said, send our brother with us. وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِذُونَ We'll protect him. And then when the whole implication took place about the supposed theft, they said, اِرْجِعُوا إِلَىٰ أَبِيكُمْ فَقُولُوا يَا أَبَانَا إِنَّ بَنَكَ سَرَقْ يَا أَبَانَا إِنَّ بَنَكَ سَرَقْ the Quran is just beyond us, my brother. I may Allah forgive our crime. May Allah forgive our crime. So now, when the whole implication, they said, "Go to your father and tell him your son stole." Yesterday was sent. Our brother was your son stole. So what an honor that Allah said, "Fast is for me." What an honor. Then the second thing. That why fasting has been honored. أَنَّهُ عَمَلٌ سِرٌ لَا يَدْخُلُهُ رِيَا وَلَا يَرَاهُ الْخَلْقِ That there is no dilution of uh, impressing others in it. Because people don't know. 
it's 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 secret it's private it's between you and allah so that that makes it unique and the ulama say uh, imam ghazali writes wa li annaha qahrun li adwillah fasting is a blow to the devil why li anna wasilat al adu al shahawat because the avenue through which the devil enters infiltrates and abuses is indulgence wa inna ma taqwa al shahawat bil akli wa al shurb wa ma damat al shahawat mukhsibatan fa al shayatin yatarraddun ila dhalika al mar'a wa bi tark al shahawat tadiq alayhim al masalik wow look at abu hamid ghazali's ta'bir so the temptation right temptation indulgence we enjoy things glitter glamour indulgence we have all fa zayyana lahum ash shaytan a'malahum fa huwa waliyuhum al yawma wa lahum 'adhab alim shaytan comes and decorates he adorns it makes it beautiful and that's what the whole day he does khuliqa iblis muzayyana wa laysa ilayhi min adhalalati shay he just comes and decorates and it looks beautiful everything that glitters is not gold but it looks nice it looks attractive so he decorates so our weakest point is our indulgence our temptation and temptation you fuel temptation by eating and drinking come home saturday afternoon you sit you hungry you have a good meal after a good meal you know where your man, mind runs no you guys look subhanallah these are <laughs> okay man amazing people mashallah allah keep you like that immediately your mind runs thoughts whispers fantasies devilish indoctrinations wa bi tark al shahawat wa bi tark al akl wa al shurb and by limiting your intake then you narrow the passage for the devil to come in you just say on a fasting day it's hot you tired but how spiritual the dhuhr salah is and after indulging in a heavy iftar how cumbersome that isha is Allah forgive right you stand in there and you you know and i often say if you do something for the pleasure of allah then you can do it against the odds even if it's hot and even if you alone and even if nobody knows because you're doing it for allah but if you stand in up in salah because that uncle is seen or because this one needs to know and you play in an act then you can't sustain an act indefinitely you have to leak it out if you are superficial then at some point you cave in but when you genuine you run forever because it's your allah so the munafiqin came also digging the trenches because they claimed they were muslims but the hour became too intense the hunger became too severe the cold became brutal wa yasta'dhinu fariqun minhum an-nabiyya yaquluna inna buyutana awra وما هي بعورة إيه يريدون إلا فرارا. The منافقين كيم. No, no, we Muslims. After the, no, you know what? We we not actual properly Muslims, man. We need to go from here, man. Our homes are unattended. That's what they said. Allah said they were not unattended because if that's the argument, then that was from the time you left. إيه يريدون إلا فرارا. Nothing but they want to elope and flee. They want to move away. الزحف عن الفر الزحف عن المعركة. الفرار عن الزحف to flee from the battlefield that's a major crime that's a grave offense so that is the speciality so anyway we know allah says that ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyam to kind of conclude o you who believe allah has ordained fasting upon you as it was ordained on the nations before you la'allakum tattaqun so that you become conscious of allah Now the maf'ul is mahzuf la'allakum tattaqun an-nar la'allakum tattaqun al-ma'asi the different explorations the scholars give Hakim al-Umma says that Allah said fast hopefully maybe perhaps so that ideally I'm giving you loose translations of la'allakum Allah didn't say fast and you'll become muttaqi hopefully he says why because you'll become arrogant before you start fasting human nature yeah I'm living for hajj inshallah but you haven't yet left Yeah, make dua inshallah I'm sitting at tikaf. Boy, we haven't seen the moon for Ramadan stuff. Yeah, yeah, inshallah I'm sitting for tikaf. Yeah. So in advance, trumpet in yourself. Then he says something very amazing. 
that how will Soum save you from sin? I urge the ulama to read the mawaid of Hakim al-Ummah. I urge, I urge myself and my colleagues, those that are of my age and younger, and that's all. Read, this man had uloom like, you know, just beyond our mind. These were people whose speech was mulham. So he says that Allah says that fast, it will give you taqwa. So one is, the ulama say, that by fasting, you see people, is sin in whole life in Ramadan, he fasts. There's a drop in his sin. So that's a clear testimony that fasting will save. The second is, as Imam Ghazali has given the explanation, that when you limit your, your indulgence, then you block the, the avenues for the devil to mislead and infiltrate. But then he gives a third analogy. And I was like, wow, just so amazing. And that's the richness of our deen. We just keep on tapping into it. Yeah, like we, we reach in there now. We get in there now. But the knowledge had it from, it, the Quran had it there from before. كُلَّمَا نَضِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ بَدَّلْنَاهُمْ جُلُودًا غَيْرَهَا لِيَذُوقُ الْعَذَابِ Allah says the occupants of hell, every time their skin will burn, Allah will replace it by another skin. So dermatologists, recent surveys, history, research proves that there's pain receptors in the skin and they find the indication and the hint from verses like this. In Allah كَانَ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا Allah is mighty and full of wisdom. He says, what's the correlation of these two attributes after this ayah? So it's a principle of tafsir. Wherever the attributes of Allah come, the translation is the same, but the connotations differ in the context of the ayah. So he says, in Allah kana aziz, Allah has might, hakima. So the scholars say the reason why Allah will replace the skin one after the other is so that the area doesn't become numb and the intensity of the torment is not reduced. So every time it's a new layer of skin, it's a fresh infliction. So Allah is Aziz, He is power that He can allow for the pain to be intensified on that same level, on layer of skin without replacing it. But He's Hakim, He's full of wisdom and His wisdom calls for the replacement of each layer of skin. I mean, you can just read and read and read and, okay. Anyway, He says, how, how is fasting a deterrent? He says, the tasawwur of Som is mani' anil ma'asiyah. The reflection on fasting is a deterrent to sin. Then he gives the analogy just like how, I know it's a bit complex and it, but we, we end in brothers, we end in. Yeah. Just like how the punishment of hell, wuku'i adab, is not mani' anil kufar. The sawur of the wuku is mani' Oh, oh, you know, okay, give, give me five more minutes, inshallah. Are we there? Okay. Imam, Imam uh, Abu Hanifa said, Khada'atni imra'atun. Faqahatni imra'atun. Zahadatni imra'atun. These people were learning. They were learning. They were in this journey of learning, learning. He said, one woman in my life deceived me. I'm not talking of your wife. One woman in my life deceived me, Imam Abu Hanifa said. One woman taught me fiqh, and one woman made me pious and close to Allah. So I was walking, فَأَشَارَتْ إِلَى شَيْءٍ مَتْرُوحٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَتَوَهَّمْتُ أَنَّهَا خَرْصَى فَذَهَبْتُ لِأَخُذَهُ فَقَالَتْ إِحْفَذْهُ حَتَّى تُفَوِّضَهُ إِلَى صَاحِبِهِ I was walking, and a woman, she pointed. So I thought she is hard hearing and speech impairment. So when I picked it up, she said, now look after it and give it to the owner. So I'm like, okay, Marti Uchkai girl. You know, I was reading something, there's ulama here, so I have this thought. I, I'll share this with you. And I, I, I thank Allah for this year because I just love it. I just love reading. And every time I read it, like it's something else to give to the ummah. And, and I, 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 I'm grateful to Allah. So in Qurtubi it's written, that when uh, the brothers of Yusuf dropped Yusuf in the well, they said, Yaltaqituhu ba'du sayyara. Some caravan will pick him up. But they said, Yaltaqit. And Yaltaqit is the word used for lukta, that is an item that's dropped, or laqid, that's a minor. So Imam Qurtubi 
deduces from the word yaltaqit that it affirms the argument that Yusuf was a minor. This is Quran. Anyway, so I picked it up. Now I couldn't do anything. I had to look after it because it's my responsible. Arif, ifasaha, wawika'aha. Uh, make it known and tell people who it is till you find it and then return it, etc. And then, Sa'alatni imra'atun. A woman asked me a ruling pertaining to the cycle of women, etc. And I didn't know it. So I thanked her, فَتَعَلَّمْتُ الْفِقْحَ مِنْ أَجْلِهَا So I went and I learned fiqh because of this woman. And I was walking one night, so one woman said, هَذَا الَّذِي يُصَلِّ الْفَجْرَ بِوَذُوءِ الْعِشَى فَتَعَمَّدْتُ ذَلِكْ حَتَّى صَارَ دَعْبِي until that day, I never read Fajr with the wudu of Isha. But when she said it, I said, Ya Allah, this is what they are thinking. Let me start it. From that day till the day I died, I read Fajr with the wudu of Isha. But I'm saying a man like Abu Hanifa, learning, learning, trying to understand deen. Break your head to understand an ayah of the Quran. Break your head to understand hadith. Don't give up on this year. You're breaking your head for everything else. I don't understand it. You don't understand it. We're not going to understand it. And even if we understood it, where did we go? In analam afuz bi muradi sa'yin wa kam min hasratin tahtat turabi. If I don't know, there's so many that died that didn't know. What's the difference? I met a man in Canada who has an empire. He say, I didn't know how to sign. Today I'm employing everybody who has all the skills. And I came here picking up litter and Allah gave me the empire. I'm not saying stay uneducated. That's not what I'm suggesting or advocating. I'm saying break your head to understand deen. Anyway, he says that Allah repeatedly in the Quran says that uh, the consequences of kufr is hellfire. So the whole Quran, Allah speaks, when he speaks about adab, he says Jahannam. Now, the occurrence of the adab will happen in Akhira, but the reflection of the occurrence is a deterrent to cover. That if you think, oh, that's the azab, I want to stay away. He says in the same way, the tasawwur of soom is a mani from ma'asiyah. How? If you sit and think, hey, you know what, when I'm fasting, actually I'm staying away from halal. How dare I indulge in haram? The tasawwur, when, you, when you're staying away from fasting, what are you doing? You're abstaining from food and drink, which is halal. Fi nafsihi. And your partner from dawn to dusk. So if you reflect on the haqiqat of soom, then that itself is a mani' from ma'asiyah. Because in essence, I am withholding from permissible things which momentarily my Lord has made forbidden for now. But after the sun sets, it's perfectly permissible to indulge with my spouse and to have conjugal relation. So reflect on the haqiqat of soom, abstaining from halal, then all the more I should abstain from haram. May Allah grant us the understanding. And the last thing that of course was the sending salutations on Nabi alayhi salam. Amma Aisha radiallahu anha said, Zayyinu majalisakum bis salati ala nabiyy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You don't decorate your gatherings by a comedian. We have in a barbecue and a social night, we get in a comedian. No, no. Decorate, adorn, beautify your gathering by sending. Let us all recite salawat. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik wa zid wa tahannan wa tarahham ala habibina wa qudwatina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Fudala bin Ubaid radiallahu anhu makes mention Nabi alayhi salam seen a person performing salah. Lam yumajjid illah wa lam yusalli ala nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After salah he made dua. He directly asked. He didn't send praise Allah. He didn't send salawat on Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ajala hadha. He is very hasty. He is very hasty. Call him here. Called him. And then he said, listen, when you make dua, فَلْيَبْدَأْ بِتَحْمِيدِ اللَّهِ Then you start off by praising Allah first. First praise Allah. Then you send salutations on Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu says, anna Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dakhala nakhla. He entered a date palm. فَسَجَدَ An orchard. Then he went into sajda. فَأَطَالَ السُّجُودِ He prolonged his sajda. حَتَّى خِفْتُ أَوْ خَشِيتُ 
both narrations appear. Hatta khiftu aw khashitu anna Allah qad tawaffahu. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that was so prong, prolonged that I panicked he passed away in sajda. So I came close and I felt him. So when he got up, he said, Malaka ya Abdul Rahman, what's the matter? I, I said, Oh Nabi of Allah, really? I panicked. So he said, Jibreel came to me and he said, Allah ubashirak, should I not give you glad tidings that Allah is saying, Man salla alayk, sallaytu alayhi. Wa man sallama alayk, sallamtu alayhi. Fa sajattu lillahi shukra. That Allah said, I must tell you that whoever sends salutations on you, Allah will send mercy upon him. Whoever sends greetings on you, Allah will send blessings upon him. So I fell in sajda in gratitude. I leave you with these concluding remarks of Salman radiallahu to Abu Darda radiallahu. They were amongst the two that were paired up. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Medina, five months later, he paired up the muhajireen and the ansar in the house of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. 45 sahaba were paired up. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was paired up with Kharija bin Zayd radiallahu anhu. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was paired up with Itban bin Malik radiallahu anhu. Abdurrahman ibn Awf was paired up with Sa'ad bin Rabi' radiallahu anhu. Zubair ibn Awam radiallahu anhu was paired up with Sulama bin Sulama radiallahu anhu. Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu was paired up with Aus bin Thabit radiallahu anhu. Talha bin Ubaidullah radiallahu anhu was paired up with Ka'ab bin Malik radiallahu anhu. Musa'ab ibn Umair radiallahu anhu was paired up with Abu Ayyub Ansari Khalid bin Zayd radiallahu anhu. Then Abu, uh, Abu Hudayfa, Abu Hudayfa radiallahu anhu was paired up with Abad bin Bishr radiallahu anhu. Salman radiallahu anhu was paired up with Abu Darda radiallahu anhu. Uthman bin Madhun was paired up with Abu Haytham radiallahu anhu. Bilal radiallahu anhu was paired up with Abdullah bin Abdul Rahman al Khathami radiallahu anhu. 45 Sahaba and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam paired up and they became together completely inseparable. Amongst them was Salman with Abu Darda. So you'll find a lot of correspondence. Salman writes to Abu Darda, Abu Darda to Salman radiallahu anhu. Kataba Salmanu ila Abu Darda. He wrote to him, he said, Inna ka lan tanala ma turid illa bitarki ma tashtahi. Inna ka lan tanala ma turid illa bitarki ma tashtahi. You're never going to reach what you aspire for, your spiritual goal, until you don't part ways with your unlawful aspirations. It's, 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 it's just basic ABC. You don't give up your haram, you're not getting anywhere closer. And you're not going to accomplish your vision and it's not going to see fruition until you don't persevere on things you don't like. Let your speech be dhikr. Right? فَلْيَكُنْ قَوْلُكَ ذِكْرًا وَصَمْتُكَ فِكْرًا Let your silence be reflection. السَّعِيدُ مَنْ وُعِذَ بِغَيْرِهِ And your gaze, let it introspect. When you look around you, learn, learn, observe. These things happening around you. And then he said, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ أَعْجَزَ النَّاسِ The most foolish, the most helpless of individuals is مَنْ أَتْبَعَ نَفْسَهُ who succumbs to the provocation of his ego. He just lives a life following his ego. And then he hopes, Allah will forgive me, Allah will pardon me, things will work out. The most intelligent of all people is, The one who tires himself, tires himself, and his focus is on Akhirah, he is the most fortunate. May Allah make us amongst them. I leave you with this reflection. I was now in the UK. So a brother came from Scotland to attend my talk. So he said, uh, Malna Saab, I really love you for the pleasure of Allah. And I've come all the way from Scotland to invite you to Dundee. So I said, I go Dundee every year. He popped up. I said, yeah, I go, I'm coming to Dundee for the last 14 years. He said, Wallahi, who's your host? I said, his name is Hafiz Salim. He said, but where does he stay? Is he in Dundee? I said, Dundee. So then I relaxed him. I said, no, no, I'm talking of Dundee in South Africa. May Allah bless you all. Hopefully we leave here spiritually energized as better humans where we can work passionately to rid ourselves from the curse of Allah and his Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we can become deserving of the blessings of Allah. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين 
سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم لك الحمد كله ولك الشكر كله وإليك يرجع الأمر كله على نيته وسره اللهم لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا واجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر اللهم اجعل اجتماعنا هذا اجتماعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا منا ولا معنا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم اجعلنا نخشاك كأننا نراك وأسعدنا بتقواك ومتعنا برؤياك واجمعنا مع نبيك ومصطفاك صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اجعل نبينا لنا فرطا وحوضه لنا موردا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم اجعل أولادنا أبرارا أتقياء وأنبتهم وإيانا في الإسلام نباتا حسنا رب ارحمهما كما ربيانا صغارا رب ارحمهما كما ربيانا صغارا رب ارحمهما كما ربيانا صغارا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم ما قصر عنه رأينا ولم تبلغه مسألتنا من خيري الدنيا والآخرة فاجعل لنا منه أوفر الحظ والنصيب اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من كل شر ما استعاذك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أنت المستعان وعليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين